Do I have to use a recipe? Yes. Homemade cat food is much more complex than people realize. I get a lot of comments that say, oh, I'm just giving my cat cooked chicken, peas, and carrots. This is not complete and balanced. And your cat may appear better and healthier when you start feeding fresh food, even if it's unbalanced, but you have to think about long-term health. Nutritional deficiencies don't show up right away. Like your cat isn't going to get sick overnight. So please be responsible. If you're going to feed homemade cat food, do it right. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. And first, if your cat is not already eating portioned meals of either wet or raw at scheduled meal times, you'll wanna check out my full transition guide, how to feed your cat new, better food. That's in the top right corner and in the description below. So once your cat is eating wet or raw at scheduled meal times, come back to this video. And we're going to plan before you start, so grab your favorite planner. I also sell optional printables that'll help you stay organized throughout the transition. So you're going to plan at least four months and focus on one new recipe per month. Don't get overwhelmed, there are chapters below. So next month, when you're ready to start a new recipe, jump to the recipes section and go from there. In your planner, within each month, write out the following. Week one, choose recipe, buy ingredients and supplies, write out and print the transition schedule and weigh your cat. Week two, meal prep, start the transition, weigh your cat. Week three, continue the routine, weigh your cat. Week four, continue the routine, weigh your cat. Your daily to-do lists include talk to your cat, keep track of litter box habits, your cat's likes and dislikes, his activity level, and you may wanna keep a general journal just to write what you did for the day, what you're planning for tomorrow, and keep track of what's working and what's not working. So first, you're going to have a conversation with your cat. Let your cat know that you're going to be making some changes to his food. You're going to be taking your cat to the vet for blood work and labs. So just talk to your cat and get him ready. Set up that expectation that some things are going to change. They pick up on our energy and our intention. They may not understand every single word that we say but it's always nice to communicate any changes with your cat so he's prepared. Next, you're going to take your cat to the vet, do urinalysis, fecal, and blood work. It's important to do blood work before you switch your cat's food, that way you have a kind of a before and after. You can also ask your vet to weigh your cat, and if your cat is overweight or obese, ask your vet what is an ideal weight for my cat and how much weight can my cat lose safely per month. This is really important because overweight and obese cats should not lose too much weight too quickly. They're at a higher risk for developing fatty liver disease. You're not going to decrease calories yet. First, you'll upgrade the food and then you can work on a weight loss plan. Get some better quality nutrition in him first and then you can decrease very slowly and gradually. The next step is to choose your homemade cat food recipe. An important note here, I did not create any of these recipes. So either use them as is or contact the recipe creator if you have any questions. The first option, which is likely the easiest for beginners, is to use a raw food premix. The raw food premix that I use is called Alnutrin. You can buy it a few different places and their website, Know What You Feed, ships internationally. This video is not sponsored, but there are affiliate links in the description below. TC Feline would be the next best raw food premix, especially if you're interested in feeding a boneless recipe with bone replacement already included in the premix. Each raw food premix has its own recipe, so check the website listing, read through it carefully so that you know what to expect. Now, a lot of the free homemade cat food recipes online are very similar with a few variations. If you'd like to download one thing and have everything that you need on that one thing, I'd suggest Renewed Pets Pamphlet. It's a two-page pamphlet that talks about different proteins that you can rotate through, different whole food sources like plants that can provide vitamins and minerals, and a raw or cooked recipe. It also explains how to use eggs and different fish sources for the EPA and DHA. And you can also buy Alnutrin on Renewed Pets' website. Dr. Lisa Peterson has a recipe on her website that includes cooked and raw. Catnutrition.org has a raw recipe that includes real bone and a boneless recipe with a bone replacement. Ideally, you would feed a recipe that includes real bone because fresh, real, whole food is always the best. Feline Nutrition Foundation also has a raw recipe that uses bone in chicken meat. And TC Feline has a boneless raw recipe that includes a bone replacement. As I mentioned, those recipes are very similar. So if you want more diversity, there are some paid 
homemade cat food recipe options. These focus on whole food ingredients, including plants with minimal synthetic supplementation. So there's raw fed and nerdy. They have raw bone in and boneless with bone replacement options. And then there's also animal diet formulator that has raw and cooked recipe options. You're able to view the ingredients on the listings, just not the quantities. So again, read through the listing carefully before you purchase it so that you know what to expect. There are also books that you can buy with homemade cat food recipes. One is Dr. Karen Becker's book, Real Food for Healthy Dogs and Cats. Her meal plan only works if you follow it completely. It includes bone in and boneless options using turkey, chicken, and beef, including the muscle meats, bones, and organs. There are raw or lightly cooked options. You would not cook the recipes that include bone. She also has recipes for vegetable and fruit mash. And the meal plan also uses canned sardines, eggs, a fatty acid oil, krill, hemp, or flax, depending on the protein that you're feeding. And she also provides two vitamin and mineral supplement recipes using mostly synthetic supplementation. Her book is very in-depth and there's a lot of information. It might seem a bit overwhelming for a beginner, so I'd only recommend this if you really have a lot of time to read it. Probably read it a few times. Definitely take notes if you go this route. There's also the book called Natural Nutrition for Cats by animal nutritionist Kimothy Schultz. Her book includes four raw recipes, three of which are bone-in recipes, and one is a boneless recipe with a bone replacement supplement. The proteins include whole Cornish game hen, chicken, bone-in whole meat, either chicken or rabbit, and boneless ground meat of choice. The other ingredients include heart, liver, egg, and fish oil. And there's also a supplement recipe that includes mostly whole foods and calcium ascorbate. So I would say this book is a great option for anyone that doesn't have access to a lot of supplements. Maybe international shipping is too costly. This one would be for you. You can also create your own homemade cat food recipe using diet formulation software. Raw Fed and Nerdy has a formulation sheet that's a one-time $20 fee. An animal diet formulator has an app called My Pet Recipes. It's $9.99 and then $4.99 per month after the first month. Diet formulation requires a very steep learning curve. So watch the video demos, read through the listings on the website very carefully before you buy it. The last option for homemade cat food is to work with a nutritionist. So you can choose to work with a board certified veterinary nutritionist, or you can work with a certified nutritionist that's interested in fresh food feeding, but isn't necessarily a board certified veterinarian nutritionist. And for that, I would recommend either Raw Pets Rule or Perfectly Rawsome. This is going to be the most expensive option, but it's also the most customizable option. They're going to ask you about your cat and really tailor a meal plan that works for your individual cat. And although I'm certified as a clinical pet nutritionist, I don't offer one-on-one -on -one diet formulation, but in the future, once I have professional use diet formulation software, I'll try to create some recipe videos for you. So once you choose your recipe, it's time to buy your ingredients and supplies. So some guidelines for shopping for your ingredients include USDA organic or your country's equivalent, non-GMO, farm-raised, hormone-free, antibiotic-free, pesticide-free, sodium-free, no added ingredients like natural flavors, preservatives, etc. Buy the best that you can. It's perfectly fine if you can't hit all of these guidelines every single time because a properly balanced fresh food diet will always be better than processed food. It's better to buy whole cuts of meat rather than pre-ground meat. Pre-ground meat that sits under the deli case with lights and a clear wrapper is more likely to have surface bacteria on it, and you can't rinse away the surface bacteria with ground food. So buy whole cuts of boneless meat, that way you can wash off the surface bacteria. The best places to buy your ingredients are your local farm or farmer's market, butcher shops and specialty meat places, your grocery store, or a raw pet food supplier. My top recommendation here is Hair Today. This is only available in the U.S. This is where I buy all of Jericho's ground raw food. The easiest homemade cat food option with Hair Today would be buy the chubs of ground meat, bones, and organs, plus Alnutrin nutritional supplement that's a raw food premix and fish oil. You can get all of these on Hair Today. That's the easiest option in my opinion 
especially if you're a beginner. Or if you're following a recipe, you can also buy whole chunks of meat, organs, and raw meaty bones, and the fish oil from here today. You can create an account and earn discount points on all of your purchases. You can write reviews and earn discount points, and you can also share your referral link to, with your friends and families and then earn discount points that way too. Another great raw pet food supplier is Raw Paws Pet Food. They actually offer a custom free meal plan so you can speak with them and figure out which of their foods to feed your cat. Or again, if you're following a recipe, they have whole chunks of meat, raw meaty bones, and organs. And there's a discount code below so you can save 15% off your first order. Another fantastic raw pet food supplier is Raw Feeding Miami. The easiest option with homemade cat food and Raw Feeding Miami would be buy no better for cats raw food premix or easy complete for cats raw food premix. Again, each of those premixes has its own recipe, so read the listing to see what ingredients you need, and then you can buy the premix and the ingredients from Raw Feeding Miami. And in the description below, there's a link where you can earn a 5% off coupon. Now at this point, you might be feeling a little overwhelmed. I know this is a lot of information, but as the title indicates, it is a complete guide. So this is everything that you need to know about homemade cat food. If you decide that you prefer an easier route with raw cat food that's just thaw and serve, it's already complete and balanced, then I'd suggest Darwin's. I'm including it here, even though this is about homemade cat food, because I'm sure you want more options. So again, Darwin's is already complete and balanced. You don't have to add supplements to it. Tell them about your cat using the link below and you'll get 10 pounds of food for just $14.95. And if your cat has kidney disease or kidney failure, they actually have a veterinary recipe for kidney support. So check that out. It requires a prescription, but there is an option for CKD cats. For meal prep supplies, you'll need a digital scale, some measuring spoons, freezer safe glass jars. I always recommend glass over plastic because plastic traps bacteria no matter how many times you wash it. And there's a link below for meal prep supplies that I use on Amazon. The next step, you're going to determine how much to feed. So choose one day a week when you're going to weigh your cat. You should have already written this down in your planner. You're going to weigh your cat, and then you're also going to check the body condition scorecard to see if your cat is underweight, ideal, or overweight. And you're also going to use the cat food label of what you're currently feeding to see what it recommends for your cat's weight. We have to use all three of these together because every cat is an individual. There's no magic number. This is what how much your cat should eat. Your cat should eat as much food as required to maintain an ideal weight. And again, every cat is different. Some cats have a higher metabolism, run around like crazy, and some cats are a little low maintenance and don't really get as much activity. For raw food, the general guide is to feed 2 to 4% of your cat's weight. If you don't know where to start, start with 3% and adjust as needed. For kittens, they need to eat as much food as required as their adult projected weight. So for example, your kitten may not weigh 10 pounds right now, but his adult projected weight is 10 pounds, so he should eat the amount of food that's required by a 10 pound cat. And again, if your cat is overweight or obese, don't adjust the amount yet. Continue to feed the same amount and you'll decrease the amount of food very gradually once your cat is adjusted to the homemade cat food. And I'll talk about more of that later. Next, you're going to plan the transition. And on my website, I have a Google spreadsheet. So you're going to click on this Google spreadsheet then click make a copy and a copy of the spreadsheet will open. You're going to start the transition focusing on one meal for that month. So in the red cell box, D1, you're going to write the amount of weight of your cat's one meal. For example, Jericho eats around four ounces of food daily split between three meals. So that's approximately 1.3 ounces per meal. So I would put 1.3 in that red box. The rest of the table will automate and it'll show you how much of the new food and how much of the current food to eat each day. Basically, it's a 20 day transition and you're adding 5% new food each day and taking out 5% of the current food each day. So on day 20, you'll have 100% new food and 0% current food. And also below the table, it's going to automate how much of each food you'll need for the transition. Now for food safety, only buy from clean, trustworthy sources. Use either stainless steel or ceramic or glass, like I mentioned before plastic traps bacteria even with regular washing. Wash your hands, plates, utensils, and surfaces after handling food. I use nitrile gloves that's included in meal prep supplies list on Amazon in the description below. Keep the raw foods frozen for at least three weeks prior to use, especially if they arrive slightly thawed. 
put them in the freezer for three weeks so that they're frozen rock solid for three weeks before you use it. You're going to thaw raw food in the refrigerator at least 24 hours before you portion and serve. Never thaw raw food at room temp or in the microwave. Include all of the juices and little meat bits that are in the container when you're portioning and serving the food. Essential nutrients like taurine and B vitamins are water soluble. So they're going to leach out into that myoglobin. That's what the liquid is called. So include all of that when you're portioning and serving. You can add a little bit of water in the glass, swish it around, and then pour it onto your cat's food. Do not leave food out for longer than 20 minutes at room temperature. Never feed food that has an off smell and never feed cooked bones. They will splinter and cause harm. Raw meaty bones are fine because they are soft and pliable as long as you feed the, the correct raw meaty bones. Obviously a turkey neck is way too large for a cat. So within these recipes, they recommend smaller bones that are appropriate for cats. So now that you have your supplies and your plan in place, you're going to start the transition. So you're going to use your digital scale to weigh out your cat's food, feed the correct amount of each each day. Note down your cat's reactions and keep track of what your cat likes and what he doesn't like. Mix the food very well so that it's barely noticeable. It's gonna be a very, very small amount of the new homemade food compared to your cat's current food. And since your cat is already eating wet or raw food, the transition will be very easy. During the transition, you're going to have one of the meals as the transition meal. Your cat's other meals for the day will be 100% current food. Once meal one is 100% new food, you'll start the transition with the next meal. And you should use a new recipe when you're transitioning the next meal because variety is key. You can't rely on the same proteins and the same ingredients every day. Cats need variety. Apparently wild cats consume five to seven different proteins. <laughs> so, and just like us, you know, you don't want to eat the same thing every day. So make sure you give a lot of variety. Start with a new recipe each month. And then once meal two is 100% new food, you'll start the transition again with meal three using a new recipe. And remember, this is one meal per month, one recipe per month. Don't rush. Just do a slow, gradual transition and you'll likely not have any problems with this. So a transition schedule example, month one, meal one is the transition meal. Meal two, 100% current food. Meal three, 100% current food. Month two, meal one is 100% new food because you just transitioned. Meal two, transition meal. Meal three, 100% current food. Month three, meal one, 100% new food. Meal two, 100% new food because you just transitioned last month. And meal three is the new transition meal. On month four, you can introduce a fourth recipe. You don't have to completely replace one of the meals. Just gradually introduce it starting with one meal. And then once you're about 50-50, you can rotate between the four recipes throughout the week. Common FAQ, how much do I feed my cat? You'll have to use your cat's weight just so you have a general guide number on it. Use the body condition scorecard. That will tell you if your cat is underweight, aka not eating enough, ideal, aka eating the right amount of food, or overweight or obese, aka eating too much food. Then you're going to use the recipe's instructions as a general guide. See if what you're feeding matches the recipe. If your cat is at an ideal weight, then you know that what you're feeding is the correct amount. Then adjust as necessary. If your cat's underweight, feed a little more. If your cat's overweight, we'll talk about that in a second. And again, for raw, it's generally two to 4% of your cat's weight. If you don't know where to start, start with 3% and then adjust as needed. You're going to weigh your cat weekly, check the body condition scorecard regularly, so it'll be easy to adjust the amount of food that you're feeding. How much do I feed my kitten? You'll have to feed the amount of food that's required for their adult projected weight. So again, your kitten doesn't weigh 10 pounds, but the adult projected weight is 10 pounds, so you would feed the amount of food that a 10 pound cat would eat. This is a lot of food compared to your kitten's size, so you might wanna break up these meals about five to six times a day, and then around six months to a year, you can cut down to three meals a day. What if my cat needs to lose weight? If your cat is overweight or obese, it's important to work with your cat's doctor on a weight loss plan. Do not do this on your own at home by yourself. Overweight and obese cats are at a much higher risk for developing fatty liver disease if they lose too much weight too quickly. So when you went to the vet, you should have already asked, what's a safe weight loss goal? What's an ideal weight 
how much can my cat lose safely each month? The general guidelines by Dr. Karen Becker and other holistic vets say that half a pound per month is generally acceptable. But again, please clarify this with your cat's doctor because every cat is an individual. So let's say your cat weighs 14 pounds and an ideal weight for him is 10 pounds. If we go by half a pound lost per month, the first month you would gradually decrease the food amount so that by the end of the month, you're feeding the amount of food that's required for a 13 and a half pound cat. Month two, gradually decrease the amount of food throughout the month so that by the end of the month, you're feeding the amount of food that's required by a 13 pound cat. Month three, you work towards 12 and a half pounds. Month four, you work towards 12 pounds and so on. So if your cat is 14 pounds and an ideal weight is 10 pounds, the total weight loss plan if you're going by half a pound per month, would be at least eight months total. But again, please speak with your cat's doctor about this. Do not do this by yourself. You don't want your cat to develop fatty liver disease or any other sickness if he loses too much weight too quickly. Do I have to use a recipe? Yes. Homemade cat food is much more complex than people realize. I get a lot of comments that say, oh, I'm just giving my cat cut chicken, peas, and carrots. This is not complete and balanced. For example, a mouse is much more than just muscle meat and pre-digested plant matter in his stomach. The mouse also provides bones for calcium and then secreting organs, the brain, the eyes, liver, kidney, the spleen. Then there's also the fur, the feet, the skin, the blood. Every piece of the mouse offers a specific nutrient and cats also eat between five to seven different proteins in the wild. So this large variety of foods completes and balances their nutrition. And your cat may appear better and healthier when you start feeding fresh food, even if it's unbalanced, but you have to think about long-term health. Nutritional deficiencies don't show up right away. Like your cat isn't going to get sick overnight. It's likely going to take several months or maybe even several years for nutritional deficiencies to show the negative effects. And nutritional deficiencies can cause just as much harm as feeding low quality food. Aside from bacteria, the biggest objection that veterinarians have with raw food and homemade cat food is nutritional imbalances because the doctors see these negative effects in cats and that tarnishes their view on homemade cat food. So please be responsible. If you're going to feed homemade cat food, do it right. What about substitutions? Use the recipes as is or don't use them at all. Again, I did not create these recipes. Please don't ask me about substitutions. You have to contact the recipe creator or work with a nutritionist who I've linked below. What about bacteria in raw? All foods are at risk for bacteria contamination, including dry food. For example, Midwestern Pet Foods recalled over 100 dry food products in March 2021 due to potential salmonella contamination risk. It all comes down to how you source and handle the food. Do I have to transition food this way? Yes. Even if your cat goes gung-ho from the new food, it's better to transition slowly because cats are very sensitive to food changes. Every animal offers a different nutrient profile, every plant, every supplement, everything is is different. If you switch food too quickly, it can cause digestive issues because it kind of shocks the system. Cat's digestive system gets used to processing the same foods every day, so you don't want to switch too quickly. Can I mix kibble with raw? Some say yes, some say no. I say do what works best for your cat and your situation. However, most cats that are eating dry food have free choice, all access buffet. And if your cat's eating this way, it's going to be difficult to switch your cat's food because cats are very picky about changes, especially if they're eating dry food. So again, I highly recommend using my transition plan first and then come back to this video once your cat's eating wet or raw. But at the end of the day, your cat is your cat, so do what works best for you. Can I feed a combination of different foods? Yes, you absolutely should. Like I said, use multiple recipes so that you're providing a variety of ingredients, a variety of proteins, variety of plants, variety of supplements. Variety is key. As long as you focus on one change per month and introduce new foods gradually, you should be fine. What about whole food supplements? So I personally use Pet Health and Nutrition Center's Daily Multi Plus. I personally like this supplement because it includes whole food sources like glandulars, herbs and plants, plus probiotics and digestive enzymes. There are no fillers, there's nothing synthetic, so that's my top choice. Other options include Pet Wellbeing's Spark and Earth Animals Daily Raw Supplement. Now these are not raw food premixes, 
These are supplements you can use to enhance an already complete and balanced food or recipe. So don't use these supplements to replace the supplements in the recipes. Use the recipes as is, and then you can introduce whole food supplements as a topper. What if I can't feed raw? Use the lightly cooked recipes. You may have to pay a little money because most of the free recipes online are raw. Do not cook a raw recipe. It will be deficient in nutrients. For more meal prep tips, check out this video right over Mia. Thanks for watching.